The technique of making wood splint garden baskets of the type found in France, Ireland, and England was brought to the United States by Irish immigrants and carried by American blacks to Nova Scotia. The Mi'kmaq Indians of Nova Scotia adopted the style, but used spruce roots rather than the wood splints used elsewhere. The baskets found on the west coast of Newfoundland are also made with spruce roots. Anthony White has been making spruce root garden baskets for 50 years. He learned by watching his father, and now he has taught his skill to his son, Danny. White spruce root is used because it is long, flexible, and very strong. The roots are dug by hand from June until August, when they are the most pliable. Soon after collecting, the roots are peeled. During the summer months, when the sap is still in the roots, they are easy to peel. But if they are dry, as these roots are, a knife may be needed to remove the bark. Any bumps and thicker parts are evened out. In preparation for weaving, the root is split in half lengthwise, using a smooth movement in order to avoid it breaking. Any width of root may be used in a basket, as long as all are the same. If the cleaned root is not to be used immediately, it is kept moist so that it will remain pliable for weaving. The frame and ribs of the basket are made of wit rod or wild raisin, a bushy shrub which grows in marshy areas near the edge of woods. The wit rod stem is cut off near the ground and the leaves are stripped. The bark is peeled from the wet rod in the same way as the spruce roots. The ends are trimmed and bumps are evened out with a knife. The wit rod, while still green, is wound around a circular mold and is nailed into place every couple of inches. A second wit rod is wrapped on the outside of the first and is nailed to the wooden base.
these two will be fitted together as crossed hoops. By wrapping them together on the same mold, the right size of both is assured. After they are dry, the ends of the wit rod circles or hoops are tapered, glued together, and bound tightly with string. When the hoops are completed, the smaller is fitted inside the larger at right angles. The top curve forms the handle, the bottom curve the base of the basket, and the horizontal hoop the top rim of the basket. A template or a wooden semicircular form is placed inside the bottom to act as a guide for the shape of the basket. These hoops are then tied together temporarily. The first step in the weaving process is the binding together of the hoops. A narrow spruce root is woven in a diamond pattern securing the junction of the two hoops. It is important that the wrapping of the root be tight, as this gives the basket a firm foundation and provides a secure base for holding the ribs. These diamond shapes are called the ears of the basket. In larger baskets, two or three wooden templates may be used for additional guidance in placing the ribs. The wit rod ribs are measured for length and the ends are tapered. Before and after cutting the rib length, the wit rod is tested for flexibility. The rib is then fitted securely into the ears of the basket. All the ribs are handled in the same way. The ribs are positioned evenly around the bottom of the basket and are then tied to keep them in place. The basket is now ready to be woven. While Danny splits more roots, Anthony begins weaving the basket.
final shape and quality of the basket depends on this weaving. As we've seen, the spruce root is split in half. One half is woven at one end of the basket, the other half is used to weave the other end. In that way, a balance is maintained in the pattern of weaving. By keeping the tension even on the root, and by adjusting the pressure on each rib, Danny keeps a uniform shape on the basket. The weaving continues from each side until they meet in the middle and the basket is complete. The ends of each root are woven in and cut off. Anthony and Danny are now the only two making this style of garden basket. Half a century ago, when Anthony first learned how to make them, everyone made their own as they needed them. Although Anthony does not know where his father learned this technique of basket making, both he and Danny wish to continue making baskets, and in this way ensure that the tradition is passed on to others. <laughs> 